Hey guys, Annie Noodle here, and somebody out there asked me to chat about my White Knights pastel colors that I um, went over in my sketchbook tour a couple weeks ago. Um, I did a couple pages with these, and somebody was asking me to talk more about them, and I was like, well, you know, if you bother to ask, somebody else might be wondering more about them too, so... I did a couple pages in my sketchbook again, just to kind of refresh my memory of how these kind of work. Um, and this is the swatch card that I made back when I got them. Um, they are not gouache. They are watercolor that also has titanium white in it, PW6. Um, and they come in a bunch of different colors. And I will have a lot more to say about them in the video while I'm painting. I did this video basically <laughs> that is also from my sketchbook tour and I can't throw it away because I think it's funny um, basically I did this whole video real time and then I just edited it down so there is no time lapse in this video at all so uh, and this is what my palette looks like post painting today um, and you can see that they're shiny they are not matte like gouache these are not gouache paints they are watercolor with cat hair in them. They're watercolor with cat hair in them. And they are sticky now, so I'm not going to try to get that out of there. Um, yeah. So, we will chat about things as I go. Uh, I don't know if you can hear, but the cats are restless, so I have to go feed them before I do my voiceover. <laughs> okay, so once again, I skipped the very boring get the paper wet stage because I figured that you guys would take my word for it that I got the paper wet. Um, I am not going to talk about specific colors very much in this video. I'm just going to kind of talk about the overall feel of painting with these and kind of like my impression of what I think they'd be useful for. I will say that I have one regret and that's I meant to do... Uh, a painting on black paper as well because I think these are really beautiful on black paper or any kind of toned paper probably but definitely black paper and I just totally forgot <laughs> uh, part of the reason that I wanted to do a video like this this week is because it seemed really low-key and after how busy last week was and how much other stuff I have to get done this week at the end of the month. I just, I was like, um, we're going to do a mellow video this week. Okay. So, um, what I am doing right here is actually after I put down a layer in the sky, I was going back over while it was still wet and lifting some color in that corner because I felt like it was too dark in a couple spots because I wanted it to look kind of more bumply because there's going to be clouds up there uh, and so this picture that I'm using for reference is a sunset reflection with some interesting silhouettes in the foreground and yeah so I'm just going through and this whole thing is really done wet on wet and I'm trying to see how these how easily these blend um, I will also say that the set that I have has an orange but no yellow and when I was doing this I was really missing a yellow. I was trying to do this spread in my sketchbook with just these pastel white nights and it did not work. I ended up using other a couple other colors but I stuck mostly to these and then some ink at the end. Um, yeah, so impressions, <sighs> even though these are not gouache, you have to be very careful when you're trying to layer them um, because they lift really easily. The paints themselves in the palette, they re-wet very, very easily um, in, to the point where I would say um, if you notice that gray has like a hole in it because I got it a little bit too wet 
and I just accidentally jab my brush right down into it. Like, it's really easy to get paint off of these. So keep that in mind if you get them and paint with them. Um, and this reference picture, I am so sorry if that traffic was loud there. Um, this reference picture was just a cabbage, and I thought it was pretty, and so I wanted to paint it, and it just has such nice colors in it that I thought would work really well with these. Um, and I'm really happy with how the cabbage turned out, actually. I kind of struggled bust at the beginning of this, and I did not think it was going to turn out. And, yeah. I think this, the cabbage turned out great, I think, at the end. I'm not sure about the um, landscape. I think I will probably go back and do more to the landscape. I might go back and do more to the cabbage, too. Um, actually, when we get there, definitely let me know in the comments if you think I should go back over and do, um, and go over the cabbage with lines, like ink lines, like in black. Let me know if you think I should or not. I can't decide yet. Um, So, and I apologize if my editing is a little bit choppy today. For some reason, my video editor was, like, not wanting to cooperate, which I realize I complain about, like, every week. But this one, I don't usually have a problem with. It's usually the other one that I use. Uh, so I don't know what's going on with this one today, but it was definitely acting weird. So here I am testing out how these um, spread, and they do not spread very much. They kind of just sit where you put them. You can, they are watercolors, you can um, thin them out a lot with water. Or because they have that PW6 in them, you can do like a very opaque, almost gouache-like um, application. Also, I love this green. I think it is so pretty. I, I am so glad that I did this tonight because now I'm like, oh, I could just, there are so many things that I want to do with this green. Um, so as, as a palette, like using this by itself, I don't think it works very well for me because I don't really paint in pastels and only pastels, but I really think that I will end up using this a lot more now in conjunction with watercolor, not necessarily with gouache because when I am painting gouache, I actually usually really like the matte finish. And especially in a thicker application, you can see that there's a little bit of shimmer with these. Not, It's not super glossy, but it's definitely not matte. So maybe like a satin. Um, what else can I say about these? Um, it took me a minute to figure out how to blend these at all, and I still feel like they're... They get muddy really easily, um, so that's definitely something to keep in mind. Yeah, so like right here, I start adding purple into the green to see how that will work. Um, like, they're I, they're both pretty thick paints, um, and yeah, they that purple does not spread at all. <laughs> it just sits there. So like, yeah, you definitely have to move the paint around yourself and put it where you want it to go. It doesn't spread at all, no matter how how wet the paper is. So, yeah, and so at this point, I was like, well, this is really, this is really not great. And so I started spreading the purple around, and I was like, yeah, this still really doesn't look good. And then, I guess, in order to rescue it, I was like, I'll add some gray. <laughs> And I just made it worse. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, here I am wiping everything up <laughs> because I just hated it so much right there. Oh my goodness. Yeah. No, it looked awful. <laughs> um, and that is definitely a problem that I had trying to limit myself to just this palette is that there is no, um, there is not really good way to get a deep value and that's something that I really wanted in this picture I kept struggling to try to get it in there and it just didn't happen like it there's just no dark value in this palette and I didn't want to 
I didn't want to cheat too much, but yeah. Like I said, I ended up really liking it at the end, but I can't decide if I want to go back and do more to it. Uh, I also really like this blue, and I didn't have as many problems when I was doing thinner coats, like with these, that petal, or I guess it'd be a leaf, because this is a, a piece of, this is a cabbage, it's not a flower. So that leaf that has the blue and green and purple at the bottom there, that was pretty easy to blend together in a thinner coat so that was fun um and i know that white knights has more colors of these pastels and i i kind of think i might want to get them because i know that there is like um um like a light brown i think called dune and i think there might be a sepia brown as well and there might also be a yellow like I cannot remember. They were putting out a lot of these paints um, like a year or two ago, and I I should look into that, huh? <laughs> so if you have been watching my other videos, you know I am doing a daily gouache challenge right now, and part of me wonders if some of the difficulties I had trying to paint with these is because I haven't painted with watercolors in a while, and I was kind of... It took me a minute to think of these as watercolors instead of as gouache because they they look like they're going to want to act like gouache and they don't act like gouache. They uh, definitely act like watercolors. Um, and you definitely can layer. Here I am layering a thick coat of the purple over the pink um, after I get cat hair off of my paintbrush. And then I start going in and trying to, like I said, increase the range of values with that gray. There are definitely some really nice dark corners in this little cabbage head. And yeah, I feel like I failed it. But yeah, let me know. Let me know if you think I need to do more. I don't know. I never paint with pastels and I'm really ba a bad judge at like, no, no, this value range makes sense for pastels. If you put in black, it will just look bad. And that's, I mean, it's really a possibility. So it is about 10 o'clock at night. Oh, here, I am actually doing some glazing with that. Uh, I think that was purple over the green, and it actually worked really well. I really liked how it turned out. I was a little bit surprised. I wasn't thinking that glazing over the thicker applications of paint would work very well. I was thinking it would lift it up a lot more easily. And these do lift easily, and you do have to be careful, but I, I liked how the glazes turned out. Um, Yeah, so it's about 10 o'clock at night, and I am stubbornly refusing to close my windows, and uh, there's definitely a lot of activity right outside of my window, especially because I live right by an intersection, so... Uh, if there are traffic noises in the background, I apologize, but it's nice out, so I'm not closing my windows. <laughs> so I'm also, again, putting in shadows with the gray and then just lifting them back out because they're a little bit too dark and I want them to be more subtle along the edges of the leaves like that. And I think we're getting pretty close to done with the cabbage. I, you know... I have to admit that I am surprised at the things that I have been wanting to paint lately. I didn't know that I was a I want to paint cabbages and like landscapes person. I am not surprised that I want to paint a lot of animals. That's very me. Um, I also like drawing and painting people a lot, but I've been wanting to paint a lot of I've been wanting to paint still lifes, guys. Like I I don't know what's up with that. Like. I mean, they have to be really nice still lifes and, like, very well lit and very interesting. But, yeah, I keep finding myself wanting to paint things that I'm like, wow, I didn't know that I was that person. Very interesting. Uh, yeah, so here I am going in with my Pentel pocket brush, which has waterproof ink in it, and putting in those silhouettes in the foreground of this landscape. Um, and... So I made an exec executive decision when I was putting in the silhouette of this tree that I didn't want it to be solid black. 
So I left kind of like a negative bark texture in here. So let me know what you think of that. I think it turned out kind of cool. I I was worried it would seem kind of distracting, but I think it looks interesting. So yeah, let me know what you think. I didn't have any issues going over the watercolor with this um, brush pen at all. I wasn't thinking I was going to have any issues. I usually don't when I'm going over watercolor, but just in case you were wondering if it was different than usual watercolor, I did not have any problems whatsoever. Um, see, doesn't that tree look fun? I just think it looks interesting. Um, and now I am working on a little bird that I think... I mean, it's hard to tell from just a silhouette, but I'm calling it a cormorant because I like cormorants, so that's what I'm calling it. Um, and this part just made me laugh. Uh, <laughs> now suddenly there's a whole bird there. <laughs> and you would think that right now I'm going to draw this branch up and the bird's going to sit on the branch, and he's not. Bird's not sitting on the branch yet. The bird's hovering above this other branch. <laughs> just... <laughs> making myself laugh when I was editing it that he's just a hover bird for a little while. <laughs> now, and now he's a bird on a stick. There we go. He's a bird on a stick. Uh, and that makes sense because it's state fair time, so everything is on a stick right now. I, um, I know this isn't the point of this video, but I love this Pentel pocket brush. I have a couple of them and I just kind of keep one in like whatever art kit I'm using so yeah I really like using them for any time I decide to do like a line and wash type thing yeah like the line variation that you can get with them is really good and they don't dry out very easily they're they're not like a super huge fan of really textured paper but they can handle it if you just go a little bit slower so, which, I mean, like, depending upon your style is how you already draw, or you feel like it would be too much of a constraint. Regardless, that is the only fly I've found of them so far. But they're pretty juicy, so they can, they can handle a lot before they get to the point where I'm like, oh, no, I think that, I think this is too much for you, pen. We will give you a break. Um, and I can't remember if I've mentioned this before or not, but I work for a Halloween store, um, like a online Halloween company. Um, my job is awesome, but it does mean that like around this time of the year, I start having less and less free time outside of work and I end up spending more and more time at work. Um, and that's just part of the job. I have no problem with it. I mean, I kind of miss actually getting to celebrate Halloween, but... Yeah, so I like my job, but just so you guys know, there might be days coming up when I miss a video. We'll see. I'm going to try really hard not to. I'm trying to get stuff recorded ahead of time that I can just kind of play. And like this, it shouldn't really matter until October. Like October is crunch time, but yeah, we have a lot of interesting retrofitting that we're doing this year oh and i'm missing this thing i should definitely be talking about so as you can see there's a darker purple now going in for the silhouettes of the buildings on the horizon and this is definitely one of those um times that i was telling you about earlier in the video where i cheated um, this is just the purple from the White Knights Pastel set mixed with a, the, um, purple core that was already on my palette, which is why I used it. So, in case you were like, why did you choose core to you for the, uh, dark purple that you wanted to use? Yeah, it was already on my palette. I'm very lazy, so it was convenient and I used it, but it worked really well, so... And then here I also used uh, Core's Payne's Gray to make their um, the White Knight's Gray a little bit darker for these, um, like, horizon buildings. 
There's a word for that, like the line, the dark line in the middle of a reflection, and I can't remember what it is. Um, feel free to comment with what that is, because I just can't remember. It's not a parallax. It's not a parallax, is it? No, it's not a parallax. I don't know. My science fiction brain is coming up all like Event Horizon, and I just, I do not think that that is an Event Horizon. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I had a lot of fun painting the reflections in the water, though, um, and, like, doing that little fade-out at the edge of the buildings where they just kind of disappear into the water. That was really fun. I don't paint reflections very much. So, it's nice that I could figure out how to do it without making it look like total garbage. Um, I do feel a little bit bad that I had to cheat, but... It is what it is, and I think, I mean, one of the things that it's nice to know is that, like, I can use these without hesitation with my other watercolors. Like, there's no compatibility issues where it gets chunky or weird. Um, I will also say, if you still have questions about White Knight Pastels, I will link. So, Kim Crick, if you don't follow her, she's done a few different videos I think on White Knight Pastels. Um, so yeah, I will link her videos. I th I'm pretty sure she's where I originally found out about them and why I bought them to begin with is because I saw them in her videos and I thought that they looked really cool. And I think that she actually does a uh, painting on black paper with some of them so that you can you can see what that's like too and why I'm so very interested in doing it because it looks so nice and I just think it's going to be fun. So I'm going to definitely make time for that soon. We are coming down to the end of the video. Uh, I'm just putting in some lines of regret. I put these in and I regretted it and I liked the like soft pastel -y look of the water before I put in these little waves and it's fine <laughs> but I liked it before and so I end up just kind of going over it with the water wash to try to help them back off a little bit but but I wish I wouldn't have put them in there. That's okay. That's why we have sketchbooks right is so that we can make these choices on a sketch instead of on a more important finished piece of work that we spent 30 hours on. All right, so I left some tape peel fun in here for you guys. Everybody loves tape peel, right? Like, oh, it's just so great. So we are at the end of the video. It's extra satisfying over that pen, I think. We are at the end of the video. Um, oh, and this is my Hanamule sketchbook. So I was really careful with this tape and it's still ripped a little bit. So here's the finished spread. If you notice, um, there was another sketch on there that I took off because I decided I didn't like it. So I will probably put another something on this spread later. I just don't know what. Thanks for stopping by, guys. Bye-bye.